Welcome to hour number two on a Monday with hashtag Daily K's host, Peter Bint. Tired of just scratching the surface of career? Want to get deep in the weeds? And yes, we unpack everything about Korea through its history. Now and then, with David. I do remember last week, David, when I said we do this to the music, the title and whatnot. Yeah. And yeah, I know that is maybe an older generation thing that we'd like to keep here on Andy Dung Road. <laughs> I'll hold up my hands and I'll do it with a smile and I'll, I'll be on cue next week. Fantastic. Yeah. You are looking fabulous today, David. I really want to wear a denim jacket again. I haven't done so yep. since I was about... 22 23 Mm -hmm. i can't i can't quite do it i'm really bad with fashion it would take me a couple of years before i get on board right Right. isn't this a trend that's come back around now as well i don't think i'm pretty fashionable (laughs) i think i'm still i mean i've gone for the vanilla ice dyed blonde hair and the uh the blue denim jacket i've got jeans on as well so i'm doing the chong chong fashion that's amazing i've I've got double denim and just why not have why a bit not? of fun so yeah uh, i look forward to seeing you in a denim jacket soon, okay, you're inspiring me yeah the yeah. leather jacket i've been talking about i've never worn one in my entire life have you got uh, one in your closet as yeah, well yeah i've got one of those i've just got to do it right just got to take the dive in head That's first it. <laughs> and it'll be your first <laughs> it's it will be for the hashtag good mm-hmm. segue there Dave. Yeah. did you have a good weekend anything interesting perfect weekend i'm now fully vaccinated Lovely. Um, recovered from that i've been running i've taken the kids out to the park we've Ooh. seen these high skies yes. didn't see any fat horses no stout stout horses <laughs> didn't see any of them but sometimes the week starts and you're ready for it you're mm. feeling good that's me this week this week yeah. yeah yeah we will be honest sometimes you don't feel like that right you're like i don't want this week to begin yeah i'm feeling like you as well david uh today after mogadishu and going into civil war and embassies yeah we're switching things up completely Let's get on to sort of dramas, Korean dramas, which are so hot right now. And and people all around the world watching, tuning in. And Mm. there's a drama for everybody, really. Absolutely. Whether you're into zombies, soldiers, (laughs) uh, beautiful people, history, it's all there on the Korean dramas. You're right. It's not just a stereotype. I think maybe back in the early 2000s or even late 90s, all very like depressing your brother was your sister who you were dating and then cancer and dying but but nowadays there's so much difference right out there variety and they've moved on uh, a lot of the time from that cinderella love story Mm -hmm. they've adapted and one of the big ones one of the hot ones that got a lot of attention was a drama called itaewon class my mum was addicted your mum was addicted she doesn't usually fangirl over anyone Mm -hmm. but with park sojun the Mm -hmm. main lead Mm -hmm. she was a little too keen uh, <laughs> i watched the first episode it was like a movie that first episode yeah like his father passed away and then he got revenge by beating up the guy that was responsible and i was like i think i've seen it all like and i just stopped there <laughs> that, that that happens but at least you got a taste of it mm-hmm. and yeah park so jun with with that hairstyle which mm. becomes so he had his fringe or bangs yeah. <laughs> right he had that hairstyle this was a huge drama that gained a lot of attention not only in korea mm. but all around the world and it did that because it was telling a new story yeah some of the themes as you say were quite sort of well versed and we've been through them before yeah but it was centered on this place called itaewon mm-hmm. and that's what i want to look at today we want to look at what itaewon is what it is part of but before that just in case for any of our listeners that haven't seen yeah itaewon class you should <laughs> you, you should at least check it out maybe yeah. do a few episodes but it's a story about sort of a ragtag group of people a mm. bunch of sort of mismatch that don't fit into normal societal Mm. positions and standards and they get together they're normally morally upright Mm. and they take on the big corporations they take on the the big rich empire Mm -hmm. and they aim to bring it down yeah and they do that through a late night bar right that's their kind of segue into it and the business they're running as you said all together as kind of this ragtag outfit who do remarkably well right they do remarkably well because they 
What's very interesting in this is they give power and authority to the youngest people in their group. Oh, now Korean society can sometimes be <laughs> quite based on age or yep. hierarchy. That's that's just the way it is sometimes. Sure. Um, but in Itaewon class, the the position of authority, the manager, it's given to the youngest person. Oh. It's given to the girl because. She knows social media. Mm. She knows how to to make things look cool. She knows how to create vibes, and so really interesting story that that touched a lot of hearts. I think. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, if you're interested in Korea, you might have heard about Itaewon being this cool, trendy place where lots of people from lots of different countries kind of get together. Mm-hmm. So I think that piqued their interest as well. Actually, in episode one, it doesn't come out at all. It's all about his countryside beginnings. So I didn't see that part. But I think some of the locations are actually in Itaewon and they became kind of tourist hotspots as well. Yeah, that's right. The the bridge that goes over where you can see Namsan, Mm -hmm. things like that. Looking more also at origins of Itaewon class, maybe some people will know or they won't know, but it was originally a webtoon. Oh. And a lot of Korean dramas do start as webtoons. And. A webtoon is kind of like a digital comic, yeah. manhwa, um, which you read online on a, on a phone or mm-hmm. a tablet. But it started out as that, and it was one of the biggest webtoon successes. So it had this incredible fan base yeah. and success. Even before it hit the screen. Sure, that seems to be a big trend for dramas in the past, what, five, six years. And that means they already have a lot of interest behind them before they're even released, right? Absolutely, but then also a lot of expectations which are hard to keep up with because people that are watching these webtoons, mm. then they have images of what the characters would look like. And sure. It's, you then have to live up to those things. Yeah, yeah. I think Park s o j u n luckily, because he's a very handsome chap and a decent yeah. actor, kind of yeah. lived up to a lot of them. Zana's on the chat from Malaysia saying, wasn't this what got Park s o j u n a love call from Hollywood to be in the Marvel movies? It might have done yeah. him no harm at all. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And congratulations to him. That's a really cool thing. In terms of Itaewon these days, yeah. though, I know a few people who own restaurants, and some yeah. of them now sadly used to own restaurants, is not doing so well, right? And that's one of the reasons why we are talking about it today, because mm. in the news, we're... Itaewon used to be this bustling district and everybody will all have different images or memories mm-hmm. of this place in Seoul called Itaewon. But a story, the story is coming out in the news at the moment. So we have these signs in, in Korea that say i m d e which is for rent. Uh-huh. They have these big red characters. Yeah. In Itaewon, of the small stores, so the stores owned by people, mums and pops and young people, mm-hmm. 32% vacant. Oh, my Now, goodness. Now, what does that mean? If you take the average of Seoul, the average vacancy rate of small stores in Seoul is 6.5%. Oh, wow. Itaewon is 32. So you can see that it is a problem all mm-hmm. around the city, but this area specifically is really being hurt. Yeah, it's because they've got so many restaurants and bars and the nightlife's great. And then added on to that, we're seeing a photo of the district, which yeah. is really cool and trendy, some of the back alleys. Yeah. But I think another big problem was a few outbreaks were linked to certain spots in Itaewon in the early days mm-hmm. of Corona, and that put people off even more. That's correct. And, but it's not just because it's a, a busy district or a place you can go and eat and club and things like that, because other areas of Seoul that people might know about But if mm. you take Gangnam, if you take Hongdae, mm. if you take g o n d e University or Gongguk University, they've seen their sales drop in the last year by around 40%. Uh-huh. So everywhere has been affected by this pandemic, sure. especially if you own an entertainment place for Itaewon. 82%. Oh, my goodness. So it's double. So what we're just trying to bring attention to is this place that was so known about a year ago because of the drama sure. has dramatically dropped in the last year. It is very sad, isn't yeah. it? Lots of messages as well related to what we've been chatting about. Siska says, I didn't watch e t a One Class, but Shijak is my favorite from the soundtrack. I think that's from Kaho. That became a 
big hit as well. There are lots of K dramas originally from webtoons these days, and Ito One it's a hyped up area, but I usually get lost when I travel to Seoul and visit there. I think Gangnam is a little e- easier to navigate than Ite One or, or even Hongdae. Mm-hmm. Yeah, depending on which side you're at and the, which back alley you go down, you can get a little disorientated. Sometimes it's fun to get lost, <laughs> but that, that song on the soundtrack, a really good song. Yeah. We have a message from Zana that said, At first, I thought Itaewon class was about Park Sojun becoming the gangster of Itaewon Road <laughs> or something. But suddenly he opens up a restaurant. And mm-hmm. yeah, despite everything that goes on, uh, a very moral, virtuous and upright character. It's so good. Yeah. Also, a fun fact from Zana is that stray kids love Itaewon class so much. God's Menu was inspired by Lee Tae Won class. Oh, as the well. song! Wow. Yeah, and apparently the Marvel director was so in love with this, that's why Park So Joon is going to Hollywood. Really? Yeah. He was watching the K drama. Amazing. Good on him. Uh, Cherie uh, also says Lee Tae Won class gave me mixed feelings because the beloved dad who died, I think that was episode one, was the awful bad guy in Secretly Greatly. Yeah, some actors are good at doing mm. both roles, and you might associate them with another role and mix it up. It's hard sometimes to differentiate. It is. Terry Russell wants to talk about Park s o j u n s hair, saying <laughs> that was awesome in that show. Now, my nephew, who's about 14, 15, uh-huh. he had this hairstyle. And because it was trendy, sure. the, the hairdresser gave it to him. Yeah. And it was only when we started watching i t a e w o n Class that I went, oh, oh. Uh-huh. I get the fashion now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's very... kind of that short fringe, right? Not it quite is. too long. I don't know. Park s o j u n can pull it off. I'm not sure how many regular folk Next can. Next week, Peter? I'll give it a try. Give it a try. And probably never return to the show. <laughs> um, we've got to talk about e t a e o n e now, right? And, and why it's important and how it came about with the name as well. Where do you want to start off, David? Well, the name e t a e o n e it's based on what we would call Chinese characters. Mm-hmm. So we We know the or- but there are two different stories of why the place is called Itaewon. Oh, so I'll just very briefly take you through two of the stories. Mm-hmm. The first one is we have this idea of a won, and a won would be like a tavern or an inn. Ah. So when people were traveling to and from the capital city, they mm-hmm. would need to rest, they would need to eat, and they would use one of these wands. Uh-huh. And at the time, the capital was called. Um, um... Hanyang. There we go. So before it was <laughs> called Seoul, it was terrible. called Hanyang. Now, during the Joseon dynasty, in about the 1600s, uh-huh. so we go about 500 years ago, this area where i t a e w o n is today had lots of pear trees. Uh-huh. So when you stayed at the one there, it was the pear tree tavern. Oh. And so i t a e w o n we could sort of translate it as the pear tree tavern. Sounds lovely. It does. And that's <laughs> yeah. where people would stay. Uh-huh. Another interesting story that... more ties into the multicultural aspect of it. There was a, a Japanese invasion of Korea, the i m j i n War, mm-hmm. in the late 1500s. And after Korea had successfully defended itself yeah. against the Japanese invasion, there were some Japanese soldiers that weren't able to make it back. Oh. We didn't have sort of Incheon Airport sure. and things like that. They It was very stranded. difficult. Yeah. And so they were stranded. And so they found themselves in this area. And so it, it refers to the place where many of the sort of surrendered Japanese soldiers then stayed and lived. Ah, that's another potential etymology of the name i t a e w o n Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. So two different ones, but that live with us. Now, if we come more into the modern age, if we take 1945, when the, we have g w a n g b o k j o l the light returns to South mm-hmm. Korea, it regains its freedom. There was a American military base. placed in Korea. Sure. And there were various ones placed around the country. But we have the biggest one, which was called Yongsan Garrison. And that was placed right next to the i t a e w o n area. Sure. And this is a huge piece of land mm-hmm. right there. And so what would happen then is all of these American soldiers that were based far away from home, they would go out into the neighboring city and you, you'll be able to see some pictures coming up. Yes. And they would... go to the nearest place, which was i t a e w o n So uh-huh. it became associated then with 
American soldiers, mm-hmm. with with rock and roll music, <laughs> with、um, denim jackets, and all of these things that would be different from traditional. Korean styles of life. Sure, it was a very different hub. It's actually part of the reason when I used to come in the eighties and nineties, I didn't like Itaewon because to me it didn't feel like Korea at all. Yeah, it was so odd. Like this place with yeah, loads of foreigners because you couldn't see any foreigners back in those days、mm-hmm. unless you're in those kind of hubs and they're selling like fake designer goods and things like this and oversized clothes for the American soldiers. Yeah, I was like, where am I? So I was just a bit shy and unfamiliar with it. Uh, and actually, it's where my father was based when he was part of the UN forces here,、mm-hmm. and it's where my mum and dad actually met. She was running a restaurant there, and so I've got a lot to thank to E Two One. So it has a personal connection. That's a beautiful story, and it is a place. That's what we're trying to sort of. Get to grips with here, where people meet, where、mm. multi people from different backgrounds and cultures do come together. It has been that melting pot,、yeah. and many people have therefore positive、uh, associations and images of that. And、mm-hmm. some people, of course, then are also a little bit more resistant to that. Sure, resistant、yeah. to the change and whatnot. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Just next door to Itaewon, something that I'd like to show the listeners, and we'll bring up a picture of this, is Hebangchon.、Oh. Now, Hebang sort of means liberation.、Mm-hmm. So we have Jaiyu as freedom, and Hebangchon is a village. So this is the liberation village.、Oh. And many listeners might have seen images like this on the on on the screen. We、mm-hmm. have Namsan Tower. After the Korean War, and the Korean War is interesting because the front where the two armies would meet,、sure. that went up and down the peninsula many、yeah. times. So Seoul changed hands, Pyongyang changed hands.、Mm-hmm. Once the war finished, many people were without a home.、Mm-hmm. Where could they go? They went to the Liberation Village,、oh. Hebangchon, this place next to Itaewon. On the hill、mm-hmm. became a home for people without a home.、Uh-huh. I think that's a really nice story. So it's always had, you know, this element of that is where you can go and find a place. Sure, even if you've been displaced, and now it's like really trendy. Lots of people, especially foreigners, call it HBC, yeah, and they might not know about that history. That's really cool. And then the other influence here, which is harder to see in Korea, yeah, in Itaewon. Islam is not well. It is gaining traction, but、mm-hmm. it's long been a very small proportion of the population, right? It has. So、uh, the number of Muslims in in South Korea at the moment is about two hundred thousand. So、uh-huh. it's a very small. It's zero point four percent of those two hundred thousand Muslims in South Korea. About ten thousand have actually acquired Korean citizenship. Oh wow! So that, that's a sizable percentage, I think.、Mm-hmm. I'd like to try to show you a picture now of the mosque in. Itaewon.、Oh. So, Itaewon is also home to the Turkish community in South Korea, and it's really interesting that during the Korean War,、mm. which I just mentioned, there were fifteen thousand Turkish soldiers fighting with the South Koreans.、Mm. We see them as a brother nation because of that, right? It's really interesting that if、oh. you speak to South Koreans about Turkey,、mm. one of the words that will come out very quickly is "hyongjae,"、like、yeah, brothers, and it's. <laughs> It's a really important thing, and Itaewon, for the most part, is home to the Turkish community、oh. in South Korea. That's where the big mosque is. Sure,、um, you can go and buy sort of kebabs and ice cream. Yes, but then just see this culture there out on the streets, and so. That's a really cool thing, I think, to have that there. Yeah, just seeing those, you might think, oh, it's there to target the foreigners, you know, and that might help as well. But yeah, we do have a lot of those kebab places there, and they are sometimes popping up in random places here and there. And there'll be an actual Turkish person serving you the ice cream or the kebab. Yeah,、uh, and they do have a very positive image, as you said, when we met in the third, fourth place. Uh, final for the World Cup, right? I think everyone was like, "This is a celebration yeah, yeah. of that relationship back in 2002." I'm in London. I'm in Australia. Tokyo. The Philippines. Finland. Indonesia. New York. Arirang Radio. Radio. Now live in Seoul. Talking about Ite One through Ite One Class, and unfortunately, due to the news that it's really struggling at the moment, because、yeah, I've been driving 
down places like Gangnam Tero, the big street at that hot spot. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, there are lots of people out, you know, on the weekends yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But I think it's not the same at Itaewon, right? That's kind of struggling to get back to where it was. It is. And, you know, that this pandemic affects everybody differently. So that's yeah. what we're seeing here. And, and it's just rather interesting and heartbreaking how it's gone from the hottest place in mm. the dramas everyone was talking about it to a year later and it needs resuscitation or yeah. something at the moment i hope yeah once we do see that herd immunity level of vaccination people will be more mm. willing to go back right siska from indonesia saying what an interesting history behind itaewon's name i love that pear tree in i yep. want to stay there <laughs> i'll be there with, in the next room yes <laughs> um we ha- we have some messages from faz benchmark and i am zana both talking talking about the Itaewon mosque saying oh. they want to go there and bring it up we'll show you a picture as well on on the uh, on the live stream it's quite grand it is it, it, it's really big and it plays a role of community and bringing people together it's a visual landmark mm-hmm. and you find it there in Itaewon yeah it, it's if I recall rightly like up the hill on one side behind the main street right yeah. uh, and that's a sight to behold even if you're not a practicing Muslim as well it looks really lovely doesn't it agreed uh, Cherie and Steve also saying love the backstory info David really interesting and a fascinating history with the early settlements as well with those stranded Japanese soldiers yeah going way back in time right mm-hmm. uh, well One more message. One more message from Tropic Girl, which says, This is lovely, and I hope that Itaewon's business community bounces back. And Tropic Girl, stay tuned because we might have some good news for that at the end of part three. Lovely stuff. So, getting back to Itaewon, one of the aspects of the drama, yeah. I think. played around the role of some characters these days who are becoming much more accepted in general society and Ite one has played a big role in like transgender and lgdb communities right yeah every society is sort of coming to terms at its own speed mm-hmm. and with its own culture and history with different elements of modern life yeah and one of those elements of modern life is uh lgbtq culture in the community mm-hmm. What we see in Itaewon class is a transgender character. We'll be able to bring up a picture on screen, uh-huh. uh, played by Iju Young, playing the chef Ma Hyani. And it's really interesting because it's a lovely character arc for this story. Mm. And the character is represented not simply as a transgender person, but a person uh-huh. in their own right, with their own history, their own dreams, uh-huh. the things they're trying to achieve. And yeah, Itaewon class did a really good. It did a decent job, mm. I would say, of representing that community. And that meant a lot to some people. Absolutely. Yeah, there are some establishments like that in ET1 as well. And it's just been an area that's been famed for being accepting, I think, because it had so many different cultures there. Yeah. And then just expanding that out into different people as well. Um, and even it's been known as being a place where maybe... a gay neighborhood has thrived as well. That's correct. So from uh, the late 1990s, um, before that in South Korea, the Jongno district mm-hmm. was, was the famous sort of gay neighborhood. Ah. But from the late 1990s, and we'll show you a picture on the live stream, Itaewon becomes the, the place where the gay community thrives. And there are, there are bars, clubs, and it's a place where people can go. Mm-hmm. It becomes a place of community and socialization, a place that these people feel welcome. And it's really interesting that it's also very close to the mosque and very close to the Turkish community. <laughs> and so it's all there together. And, and, and that's what sort of Itaewon represents, yeah. the place and what Itaewon class, the drama, was also trying to present. So there isn't a good element of reality to it. Sure. Yeah. That whole mishmash, that melting pot. I know that's a cliche, but it really feels like that when you're in Itaewon on night out with all these different background people coming yeah, in. Yeah, absolutely. And then looking towards the future by looking mm-hmm. at the past, you mentioned Yongsan Base and that was... People, I don't think, realize how big it was because not many people are allowed on it, right? You'd have to get permission to go onto the base and whatnot. Yeah. 
And now it's been vacated for the most part, I believe, right? It has. There are various issues. Have you been onto the base, by the way, or had you? Yeah, to play football a couple of times, we got a pass, right, to go <laughs> on. Right. And it was ginormous in there. And it was like a little America almost. It was exactly like a little America <laughs> in the middle of Seoul. We'll, yeah. we'll try to show you how big it was. But uh, two million square meters of prime real estate wow. right in the middle of Seoul. And in that area... People would use American dollar. Mm -hmm. It was America <laughs> inside of Korea. Yes. Since 2018, that is being handed over. All the troops have moved out. They've mm -hmm. gone down to Pyeongtaek, yep. uh, a different place. And so this land is being given back to the people of Korea. And this is a really important thing mm. because, you know, this is reclaiming its history, reclaiming its land. And what's going on now is they're going to build Yongsan Park. That's been the name. And... hopefully it might start rivaling things like, you know, Hyde Park or yeah. around the world because it's such a huge place. They're hoping that it's going to be finished by 2027. It's a big project. <laughs> it is a very big project and it's been spoken about, by the way, since 2005. Okay. It, it, it's a long time coming. Mm -hmm. They're speaking to the local community, getting voices. How should it be carried out? But this, I think, will very much... change the nature of that area of depending course. what they build there because it's such a huge area yeah and like you said in the heart of seoul just north of the river it's unbelievable and itaewon is is a cool place to go but one of my favorites that i was really surprised by the development of k y o n g n i d a n like kind of goes along the side and up the hill near itaewon right it, it does and k y o n g n i d a n was um is a great example of gentrification. So I'm not sure if the listeners are aware of mm -hmm. this term, but all of a sudden a place becomes trendy yeah. and then the rents go up and mm -hmm. everybody moves in. But then the thing that made it great in the first place, that mm. unique character is lost and yeah. then it sort of becomes empty. And, and that's a real sad thing that's happened. Just before we finish, I want to try to get onto what's happening going forward mm -hmm. in terms of assistance, because yeah. I know... Uh, Tropic Girl was talking about in the chat. Yeah. Um, there is this program going on called Save Itaewon. Oh. We, we can try to show you um, some pictures of some people standing there doing that. So what is this for? Is this for the like, failing businesses in COVID times? Yes, it's for the failing businesses to help them with rent, to help them survive through this mm -hmm. so that when society gets back together, they might be able to continue. So uh -huh. it's providing a lifeline to these people. And you can see that there, right? Shijaki, that we're going to start again, which is very similar to the message in the drama. Oh, yes, they should use that Gaho Shijak song as their theme track. <laughs> I'm sure they already have done. <laughs> Absolutely. I guess one of the questions that comes to me in this is, mm. when we see an area of a city that's sort of been so hot mm -hmm. and now is suffering, should we... sort of artificially resuscitate it? Should mm. we provide it assistance or do we let it run a natural course uh, and then let attention go to other parts of the city? Sure, that's a very good question. I like this, David. You make us think every week and that's such an interesting point because for a new place to pop up and be all trendy and hot, which everybody loves, it means naturally somewhere else must dire death perhaps it right? does and yeah a city is made of many different places so mm. what happens to itaewon will be very interesting to see but it's it's been home to many memories to me to many people so yeah, yeah. It, it does mean a lot yeah personally just because of those memories i'd like it to to rise up from the ashes but yeah how artificial should that help be that's your decision everyone's got their own thoughts on that david again thank you so much for educating us and entertaining us as well thanks to you uh, have a wonderful <laughs> week and we'll see you next monday thank you You can listen to Monday's segment now and then with David Tizard every Monday from 10am KST on Hashtag Daily K.